G'day guys, Obi from Obi's Guide here, on location with uh, Morton Bay Able Anglers, doing a bit of fishing out here and we just got onto an absolutely gorgeous mangrove jack. Um, so I figured we'd do a quick video on how to actually fill these guys and sort of how to deal with an actual fish. So what I've done is just to kind of dispatch the fish quickly, I've gone straight through, sharp knife, straight through the back of the skull, just almost in line with where his gills end there. The idea is going straight through that spine there, kind of puts him out very, very quickly. With fish, you want to get to them as soon as possible. So don't leave them sitting in your fridge for a few days before you skin them and gut them. Um, get to it as quick as you can. And we're just going to start with, honestly, back of your knife, blunt bit. We're going to start taking the scales off him. You can do this underwater if you're a bit squeamish about getting scales on yourself. Um, you can use, a, they've got these really cool little scalers that do it for you almost. They're uh, kind of, like the serrated back of a knife. The flat of a knife isn't always the most ideal, but this is what we've got, and we decided to do this at the spur of the moment, so. That knife does have a scale on it. Does it? Yeah. Well, ah, wife of the rescue. So that's what I'm talking about. What that does for you is actually grabs the scales and lets them drag back. So what we're gonna try and do is, at least in this first bit, scale as much as we can, right through to the bottom, right through to the belly, just keeping your blade almost flat. Turn it as you need, working against the grain, so from the uh, tail through to the head of the fish. Now I'm no fishmonger, so anyone out there who does this for a living, please forgive me. I'm not going to be as fast, but... So we've got most of uh, that side scale. Flip it over and I'll repeat the process. I'll do that in a moment. What I'm going to do quickly, where we'll go through is from there, straight up, typically we're going to lose about that much of the fish. Unless you want to keep it completely whole. Tonight we're going to fillet it. So it gives you an idea of how far up you really need to fill it. Don't bother uh, to scale, don't bother trying to come up with the head here because you're not going to eat that bit. Unless you put it in the soup or something. A fish like this, the wind has poor wifey over there getting covered in scales. And I really feel for her right now. Sometimes it can be better to actually let your fish sit on ice for a bit, which will actually firm it up and make getting these scales a bit easier and you're less likely to rip the skin, which I've done in a couple of bits, but, you know, spur of the moment. When it comes to big fish like this, guys, cooking it whole is absolutely beautiful, but I'm a big fan of um, filleting fish because fillets cook really easily. Um, and you don't have to worry as much when you're filleting a fish or when you're cooking a fillet, whether it's cooked through, because it's obviously a lot thinner, you're not dealing with bone density on the inside. So I'm just washing those scales away just for a bit of, so I can actually see that I've got most of them there. Absolutely beautiful. So the gross bit, and I guess a disclaimer on this one, guys, if you're a touch squeamish, look away now. What we're gonna look for is down here, it's the opening, and it comes straight up. Try not to cut into absolutely everything in there because you don't want sort of all the bad smells coming out and all the horrible stuff in their stomach. I tend to cut, you can find the back of the gill there. I'll usually come down behind the back of the gill. There's a bit of resistance there behind the gill into the stomach. Right. Love using a blunt knife. And then I do the same thing over this side. So again, pull that forward. We're just going to find the back of the gill with your fingers, come down. This is just, to me, one of the easiest ways to do it. And because we've already made that incision in the stomach there, not quite well enough, unfortunately, what we can usually do is pull the whole head away and most of the stomach as well. And then, back where that came from, something else can eat that. So what we've got is a lot less to deal with. Now some people come in through and then carefully trim around. You know, I've lost a little bit of belly there, which you're gonna lose anyway when you try and come around the ribs. Most people will. So we'll give it another wash. So I've missed some scales here on that bit of belly. I'm going to, in here, remove all this gunk. Just a light nick through that little bloodline there. 
right? So you'll see most fish right along there will have a little bloodline. I'm just gonna rinse that away. Try and clear some of that out. Just so as little as possible as tainting the fish. Now, this is the world's smallest knife. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to do this. The way I tend to do it, I'll worry about that later. I like to work from the top down. Now, some people start with the tail. I find, personally, if I find the middle of the fish here, all right, and I just start making that first little incision along the flesh, and I follow that fin line. It gives me a bit of a guide. Um, now, I mean, if you've done this 100,000 times, yeah, you're gonna start at the tail, and you're just gonna fillet it like it's the easiest thing in the world. For most people, though, it's not. So all we're gonna do is just, I'm keeping that blade kind of angled in, using the, the bones there as a bit of a guide, and I'm just slowly working the fish away. All right. And we're gonna do that the whole way down. Then when we get to the tail, try and sort of work in a bit deeper. And what you'll see is what we wanna try and do is as we work through, one moment, not quite. coming out the other side and we'll just work our way down the tail there whether it's perfect or not eh, we're not here to win awards we're here to fill it a fish so what i'm doing here is working just along the backbone there because you kind of got a, a little ridge there so if you just work straight through the ridge you're going to lose a lot of flesh on the other side as well so i tend to work my way down to the ridge and then we work our way there's the rib cage your knife will almost follow that rib cage you can cut straight through it if you want, but you're gonna be left with a lot more bone. So I try and work my way gently and slowly along it. And now that I've got that backbone there exposed, slowly working the knife along and just separating the... This guy's got a really tough skin on him. It's one of my first ever jacks, so I've never skinned one, never really even played with one. Looking forward to cooking it though. So I'm just gonna work my way around trying to dodge as much of those bones on the ribs there as possible because that's more to deal with later. Now, I may not be able to unfortunately, I just have to work with me. The other option, because it's what I'm going to have to do, so we've separated most of there, let's make it really nice and easy and we'll just go straight through those bones there and I've just nicked my finger. <laughs> cleanest attempt but at the end of the day what you've got there I've left sweet FA meat on there and all we've really got bone wise left in here is you'll find there's that rib cage which you know if you want to if you don't want to do it the hard way earlier you now can just come along slowly work, work your knife under the ribs if I can get under there not like a fool of myself where is it? There we go. So you work your way along, figure out exactly where the ribs begin and end, and just trim that away. Because at the end of the day, really, where is it? The last one. most of that, most of us are not going to bother to try and deal with that tiny little bit of flesh there, which has mostly got rib bones through it. And what you end up with is, hopefully, not a totally massacred piece of fish. Now, there's no pin bones left along there. There's no pin bones left along there, doing it this way. What a lot of people fear with fish is the bones. And if you just go from the tail straight on up, like they would in the fishmonger, they're just gonna go straight through. They're gonna take all of those bones along there. That's okay. That's, you know, if you've got a, a, a you know, pair of pin boning pliers and you wanna work through it, that's fine. Doing it this way, ultimately what you've got is a perfect bit of fish. No bones left in it. I lie, there's one tiny pin bone. But essentially, there you go. Chuck that straight on ice. Turn it over and do the same thing on the other side quickly. 